Good evening everyone, so warm welcome back. My name is Josephine. If this is the first time you're joining this program tonight. Here I'm sharing a few different practices that uh, we've been implementing inside a women's prison here in Sweden as a weekly site therapeutic intervention. So tonight we will explore the concept of interoception which is meaning our ability to fine-tune a sense of connection with our inner emotional states but also our physical sensations that we have inside our body. And sometimes when we've been stressed during a long period of time it's almost like we're spending a lot of time inside our heads and it's almost like we're losing this connection with our bodily sensations sometimes. And we can practice to get back into that. So, welcome to have a seat on a chair. You can sit at the front edge of the chair or leaning back. You have a free choice here. And I invite you to arrive into this moment that maybe has become a weekly habit right now. Arriving into the sensations in the body by noticing the connection between your feet and the floor. Maybe the texture from the mat, your socks. And then the weight of your hip towards the chair. And from the weight of the hip, the direction upwards through the spine, maybe creating a length to the spine, to the crown of the head. Then in your own time, do a little checking. Are you carrying tension in your face that you can release? In your shoulders? Noticing the length of your arms into your hands. Then the area around the belly that we've been talking about a lot. Is it possible to release tension around your belly, allowing your breath to become deeper? And it's all an invitation, so do whatever feels comfortable for you. Then back into the weight of your hip, the sensations under your feet. And in the prison, we normally start these classes by tuning in. So moving individually, checking in if there is any possible tension that we've been carrying around during this week that we would like to release. And this movement can look However you like, it doesn't matter how it looks like. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be a yoga posture. It can be any movement. Checking in, tuning in, about one minute. And I invite you to notice, is it difficult to find movements or does it feel good to find your own individual movements to release possible tension? You can always mirror me if you're out of ideas. Now returning towards the center and one possibility might be to place one hand on your belly and one on your chest again as a reminder of relaxing around the rib cage as much as you can. Returning to the focus around the breathing that we had last week. Allowing the belly to be soft and relaxed under the lower hand. And perhaps feeling your breath under the upper hand. And noticing how did that feel to move freely around to release tension in your own body.
So two more breaths here. Okay, so for the next practice, we will expand this a little bit into some theatrical movements with our body language. And the way we're holding our bodies can sometimes reflect our inner state, our inner emotional states. And opposite, the way we're moving our body can affect the way we're feeling. So you can stay on the chair or you can stand up. So the first invitation today will be to first widen your feet as far as you can and feel comfortable with. And now let's check out what happens if we take up a lot of space. So noticing how this posture is affecting how you feel when you're standing like this. Is it possible to maybe connect this posture with a emotional state? So many inside the prison has been saying that, okay, this reminds them about um, freedom. When clenching our hands like that, occupying a lot of space around us. Some have said uh, empowerment. I feel empowered when I'm doing this. And there has been some small research studies about how these postures called power postures can affect how we feel. But notice that this might not be your optimal power pose or <laughs> empowerment pose or freedom pose. So now let's see if you can find your own variation. You can use the same pose or maybe a different way of moving your arms. It might be like this, it might be like that or like that. <laughs> so let's see if you can find your own individual expression of a sense of expansion, empowerment, and perhaps a sense of freedom. Okay, so 10 more seconds. What's going around, on around your, around your chest, around your breathing? And now, how could we take this into a movement? Could we take this into a spin? Can you walk around with this posture and notice how that is feeling? Or maybe your posture was with your arms straight up. And walk like you're really owning the world. Is it possible to do that? And then slowly release, and how would you like to release this pose? Maybe shaking your shoulders. So these women, they have been doing a weekly movement-based diary. So they've been waking up in the morning, doing a little check-in. So how do I feel today? And just noticing and acknowledging that that is not a feeling, you don't want to push it away. We just want to observe what's going on. So being a human being, especially being in a difficult situation, it's natural for us to feel all of these turbulent emotions. It might be anxiety going on, it might be stress, anger. So some of the women has been choosing to do an opposite uh, movement with their bodies. So if they're waking up feeling really low, they do a little note on Monday that, okay, I'm feeling really low on energy today. So I would today like to increase my energy. So they're trying to find the opposite pattern of feeling low. So first, you can exaggerate the opposite pattern, like feeling low. How is your body look like when you're feeling really, really low? And there we had a lot of feedback on this posture. This might not be your posture for feeling low, <laughs> but we have a majority of the women has been reporting that this has been their body language walking around like this with really heavy steps, looking down, shoulders curled forwards. So then waking up, noticing this, exaggerating, okay, this is the way I'm feeling today. 
this might be a way that I'm feeling very often and that's okay, I'm in this situation, that's fine. But today I would like to shift this around so I will find my own way of expressing some empowerment and energy in my body and I'm going to walk around like this inside my cell room for a while to kind of prep myself for this day. So I invite you to do the same, maybe like shaking up, really in, engaging in this large expansive body language for a while, walking around. And here you can notice the difference. How does it feel when you go back to that little bit more low energy state? And can you notice the difference in between? How do you feel now when you're walking like this? You can also try to increase your breath here. Maybe that is hard when you're hunching forward. And then notice the difference when you're opening your chest. And you can do different postures for expansiveness. Notice is it more easy to take a deep breath? You can also come up on your toes to take some extra, extra space. Ah, and then coming back and release. So anyhow, you would like to release that. So that was on the Monday as an example, and then you can build on this on the Tuesday. Maybe you're waking up. This has been a quite a common one as well. I wake up and I'm in such a bad mood. I'm super irritated and I'm feeling angry. Ah, okay, so notice that. How would it look like if you would play a theater and really exaggerate that you're, you're feeling really angry? How would you show that to an audience so that people 500 meters away from the stage would notice that you're really pissed off. <laughs> so, then this has been one and the face is there, you're tensing your muscles, you're noticing how many muscles are tensing. Many has clenched their fists. Some have done like this, they're ready for a fight. Okay, imaginary fight. Noticing that the arms are tensing, the legs are tensing, Maybe the face is becoming a little bit red. So you're starting to notice what happens when you're really exaggerating a body language of anger. Okay, so how would you like to release this posture? So some have been chosen to really release this by punching in the air and kicking. And maybe you want to use a sound like, ah, getting get rid of this. Ah. <laughs> some have been chosen to create some fluidity and taking that out and walking around. So here you can notice the difference. If you're walking around like this, being really angry, and you can also put your chest forward, you're ready for a fight, you're kind of picking a fight, you're really irritated on everybody you're, you're, you're meeting along your way, and then you can try to feel, how does it feel when you're moving differently, more fluid, more soft, to release that. You can also try to shake things out. Or maybe your option was to kick something away. Then it's something to build on. So every day you can do like a theatrical, exaggerated body posture for your inner state. Noticing the different muscles that are engaging. And as if you can take that out into movements, either to release it or to exaggerate it. So then at the end of the week, you have a seven days choreography where you can use music, if you like, to move to your favorite song. So as an example, now on the Monday, I woke up and I felt a little bit low. And then in the same movement, I will shift this possibly by changing the way I'm moving inside the room. I will stay here for a while to really tune in how it feels to be very different in my body language from the way I felt when I woke up. Maybe again, take it for a spin, walking around. 
creating sort of expansive opposite movements from where I was when I woke up. If this was on the Tuesday, this was the Monday's move on the Tuesday, I felt a bit pissed off. So then I will add these two together. So first from being low to being expansive to being angry, releasing angry. And then on the Wednesday, I would add something. So it would be one, two, three. On the Thursday, one, two, three, four. So you're adding up until seven days. So that is one way you, how you can use like a body-based movement practice, which becomes your emotional choreography with releasing, sensing, noticing, and then put on some music to move to if that feels okay for you. Okay, so this evening has been a lot of um, theory, a lot of talking. Uh, to end with this, I would like us to have a seat. But before we sit, I will show you the body map. So day by day, you can also add drawings on a body map. So this we have done as well. So Monday, I felt maybe a little bit low, a little bit anxious. I felt that in my belly. I felt some numbing in my hands and I felt a bit weak in my knees. I didn't have enough energy to actually get going that day. And I also had some physical tension inside my shoulders and I felt something was going on with my head, maybe some headache going on. And then this is before my practice, my movement practice. And then I can add after my movement practice on Monday, how do I feel? Did I shift something around? So this is going into my file for Monday and then I'm adding Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And it can be really hard to actually translate where do I feel these emotional states as a physical sensation. Many are pointing on their belly for worry and anxiety and anger may be red in your face, tensing the arms. So this is your own way of keeping track of what's going on in your emotional world. And it's only suggestions. So this is how we've been working. Okay, so let's do a finishing. And before the next week, feel free if you would like to explore some of these practices, maybe by doing a movement day by day, depending on the emotional state you're recognizing. So if you can shift that around by moving differently from if you would like to change or shift something or maybe if you would like to enhance something. Maybe you would like to continue to feel low that day because maybe you rarely do that and then maybe you can also feel that you're relaxing into that kind of posture. So everything is individual. But let's connect ourselves back onto the chair. Maybe relaxing your face, your jaw, relaxing your belly. I invite you to maybe hold yourself like that, placing one hand on the belly or the chest. Maybe you want to hug around yourself. Whatever feels comfortable, you can also have the hands down. Now notice what came up for you when you did this practice. Maybe there were some difficulties. Maybe a lot of resistance or maybe it felt good. To allowing these practices to be all inclusive so nothing is right or wrong. And then lowering the breath down into the belly if it feels good for you. And here you can inhale, allowing the belly to come out. Extending the exhalation, so long, long exhale. Now imagine you're breathing from your feet all the way up to the top of your head. On the exhalation, releasing muscular tension all the way back to the sensations under your feet. So one more minute with the breathing. 
the feelings right now in your body, your emotions. Two more breaths. Allowing the hand to come down if you're using your hand in the movement. Okay, you can continue to stay seated or maybe lie down for a short relaxation on your own. So next week there will be a much slower 20 minutes where we will do a mindfulness based relaxation for at least 15 minutes. So until then I hope you can do some practical explorations with this if it felt good for you. So thank you so much. <laughs>